Hello. In this video, we will look at a new feature released with the Data Vault Builder 6.2. And it is a function which is leveraging something that is built in for a longer time, but we've built for a different purpose. It is about our transaction link concept. So if you look at the Data Vault Builder, we have here the Data Vault Core model. We see here my famous fly demo build on the real use case. And we see that here the links are designed as binary links. So we have the flight itself, we have the caterer, ground handler, airport in different roles, once as origin airport and destination airport. In fact, that's just role playing for airport entity. So let's as well highlight this that we see it. And we have the airline and other elements. And this is how the data vault builder worked for a very, very long time that you have exclusively binary links always between two hubs. You had before already the option to create a transaction link, but so far that was mainly for performance reasons. So we didn't have any option in the dimensional model to use this kind of connections to create our interfaces with point and click. And the change now is that since version 6.2, you're able as well to use this kind of connections to be used in the dimensional model to create dimensional models or to create flat tables for your data scientists or to create to a normal form output for business objects, Cognos or whatever tool you have or to create data products. So you can now use the transactional link as well to design something like a unit of work of relations of a transaction which usually move together and use it for logical data modeling. So I will now show you how it was done the traditional way, how we can do the new way and a little bit explain the differences between the two. I have already staged three tables, one transaction data table and two master data tables. I will concentrate here to make it as simple as possible just on the transactional data. So let's go in and let's start as usual designing the load of our main transaction table, which is a composite key of four different columns. And I could create the default satellite. Yes, it will now maybe contain a little bit too much columns, but for a first demo, that's fine as well. So now we have already implemented the working hub load and the satellite load, I start them so they can finish in the background. So we will have data when we're ready. And now the next thing is let's model here the link to origin and destination airport. So I add here a hub load. I select the same table. And in the origin column, we should have the values that we're looking for. This is the three letter IATA code, which is fine. It shouldn't be unique because there are several flights per airport that is okay. So it's not clicking the keys are unique. Everything as usual so far. So I'm doing the same for the destination. And again, everything as expected. And now we can add here the link loads because we define the keys for both sides. It will already know what the keys are, create the relation between them. Let's do it for destination as well. And that's my first implementation. So let's use the operations module to load everything which I have designed. Let's go back in here and switch over to the dimensional model. And let's create now an output. And here in this section, I will select as a start grain. I select my initial satellite as initial data set. I could give it a different name and I could use here SCD type one or two. For illustration purposes, I will just use the SCD type one view, but it works for both of them. So let's select now some random columns. But as well, let's select the relation to the destination airport. So let's select the business key and the origin airport. And let's save that. And I hope that in the background, my operations job completed. So we have the data ready. 
So this is the output we want to achieve. But let's now do it with a transaction link. So now instead of using two different links, I will remove them. I wouldn't need to, but it's just that it's more visible what we are doing. So I'm removing the original links. That was only possible because I removed the object from dimensional model, which was ref re referencing them. So that's as designed. And now, as I remove the link load and the data, I can remove the link itself as well. Good. So now how we add now a transaction link joining two or more as many links that you want together or to create a relation between as many links as you want. You go to the hub, which is defining the grain of this transaction. In this case, it's the flight. I'm adding now a transaction link. I need to name it. So let's say it represents the flight itself. And now it offers me two hash keys. Where are these hash keys coming from? If you remember well, we have created a hub load for the destination airport and for the origin airport. So that's something I need to do before I go in here into this dialog. And I can now select all the hash keys from the related hubs to be included. You could do even more. If you want to use this as a bridge table, you could show the attributes and add some attributes in here. Please don't do that. If you do it really for modeling a unit of work, it should have only the relations. But in case you would use it as a bridge table, you could do that. But if you're not sure, just use the hash keys in here and create a separate satellite for the attributes. Let's go to the review and let's uh, create our transaction link. And now instead of two separate tables, there is one table created in the database and we can load it as every other link. Let's have a look at the data and now in the same table with the flight hash key and the above destination hash keys. And we can now create again a flight business object. And we can create the same kind of output again, just taking some random columns, taking the origin airport and the destination airport. So what is the difference between these two? They are used for different approaches. Still the binary link will remain. It is necessary to link like master data together. And the assumption is if something is not delivered by the source system anymore, so the flight is not providing any caterer anymore, we will point to the latest information that we received from the source system. This makes sense like if you don't get every day like some customer group information, but still the latest custom group you assign the customer to is still valid. So that's perfectly fine. For transaction, it might be here in my flight example that the flight will be canceled. And in, in the case that the flight is canceled, sometimes the destination airport is removed. Now, it is possible that you're interested in what is exactly reflected in the, in the source system and reflected here. And this is what the transaction link will do in case some relation is set to null, even it was set before, it will be reflected and it will output the null value. In case you want to have the latest, you could do a direct link and it will show you the latest information that we had, even it's not delivered anymore from the source system anymore. So where, what is the benefit of it? It groups several links into one table, which can have a positive impact on performance. It creates less objects in the database. What is the downside? I need to prepare first the keys for all the related objects and create it. And I can't extend it afterwards because it would change the whole structure. It would change the data. So in case I want to replace now this transaction link with one, which has even the airline included, I would need to create a new one, replace this one, and then 
exchange it in the dimensional model. So if I'm creating something in an agile fashion, it can be much simpler to create separate binary links in the beginning. And then when I'm done and I know what my unit of work is, group it together and bring it to the dimension model and refactor it. But that's possible because you have the abstraction layer of the, of the dimensional model, so you can refactor it later. If you have any questions, we will put this video together with some explanatory uh, tips to our knowledge base, so feel free to look there. But just that you know, this is now a new option, how you can gain performance for certain options, but as well, how you can represent a unit of work link here in the data vault builder.